Michael here with a massive week in LEGO news, including LEGO Legend of Zelda, X-Men X-Mansion, Batman the Animated Series, Inside Out, and more sets from LEGO Sonic, Animal Crossing, and Harry Potter, LEGO Ideas Red London Telephone Box, and LEGO Hello Kitty. And don't forget to check out the latest episode of my LEGO Masters recap podcast, Talk Bricks Masters. This week I sit down with season four contestants, Paul and Nalita, for their postseason deep dive. And you can listen to it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and more using the links below. And I'll kick off another round of the weekly giveaway. Just subscribe and leave a comment about this week's news. And of course, I'm back with LEGO deals from Amazon and across the web. So if you want to pick anything up to support the channel, there's links in the description below. First from Lego Marvel, Shuri's Sunbird is 40% off. Endgame Final Battle is 39% off. Attack on New Asgard, 30% off. And Iron Man Hulkbuster versus Thanos is 32% off. From Lego Star Wars, the Endor Speeder Chase is 21% off. The Mandalorian's N1 Starfighter, Microfighter, and the Advent Calendar are both 30% off. From Lego Super Mario, the Flipper's Snow Adventure is 39% off. And from Lego Dreams, the Stable of Dream Creatures is 36% off. From Lego Classic, the Medium Creative Brick Box is 40% off. And the Creative Suitcase is 31% off. Over at Walmart, the Star Wars UCS X-Wing is 17% off. Plus, the LEGO Minecraft Pumpkin Farm is 36% off. Over in LEGO from now through the 24th, it's double insider's points. Plus, you can get the free LEGO Year of the Dragon set with purchases over $85. So if you want to pick up these deals and more and support the channel, there's links to everything in the description below. Next up, this week we got a massive update of tons of sets coming from your favorite themes for the rest of the year, including Marvel, Batman, Disney, Sonic, Harry Potter, and more. Plus, thanks to Brick Merge, we've got our first confirmation of the LEGO Legend of Zelda set coming. As was previously rumored, we're going to be getting a build of the Great Deku tree with 2,500 pieces coming out in September. And of course, this tree has had iconic appearances throughout the series in games like Ocarina of Time and Breath of the Wild. This build would have over 500 less pieces than the Lego Ideas Treehouse, but I have to imagine we're looking at something of a similar scale and size. While previously this was rumored to include figures from Breath of the Wild and Ocarina of Time, we'll have to wait and see how that turns out. And I, like many of you, would love to see this turn into a full theme. Next, for Marvel, we're getting another D to C this year, and it's assumed to be the X-Men X-Mansion. This set is set to include 3,093 pieces, which is just under 400 more than the Sanctum Sanctorum. While we don't know if this will fit in with the other modulars, I'm super excited for what this may entail, and particularly which minifigures we can expect. Similar to other large Marvel sets like Avengers Tower and the Daily Bugle, we can expect that some of the figures will be from other existing sets. So I think we can expect most of the figures from the recent X-Jet, and even Storm and Beast from the minifigure series. Judging by the prequel comic, I could see us getting Jubilee, Gambit, and Jean Grey. Professor X is a must, and based on the action figure, I'm hoping for Nightcrawler. Next, we're also going to be getting a Guardians of the Galaxy 10th Anniversary Milano, which will retail for $170. While I've gotten two minifigure versions of this ship before, it should be more in scale with the larger Guardian ship that we got. Though this set is $30 cheaper than that one, so it could be a bit smaller. For minifigures, I'm thinking we'll get the core Guardians lineup from the first movie, but I could even see the recent Rocket and Ronin bleeding over. Next, also from Guardians, while we've gotten Baby Groot and Venomized Groot, we're going to be getting a $60 potted Groot, which is interesting as we just got the announcement of the Brickhead, but I can't wait to recreate this scene. Next up, LEGO's continuing their final battle line with another $110 set. This time we'll be getting the Avengers Age of Ultron final battle, and I have to imagine that it will recreate this scene here, where the entire group of Avengers team up to take on Ultron. It said this set will feature a new Hulk, and I could see them reusing that vision, but I'm hoping for a new Ultimate Ultron and of course Quicksilver. Also from Age of Ultron, we're getting the Iron Legion vs. Ultron bot set for $15, which reminds me of this $13 set that came out when the film did. And we'll get our first updates for these characters that we've gotten in eight years. We're also going to be getting a set called Avengers Battle for $60. And as it said, this set is set to include the Hulk. I'm hoping it's this Avengers Assemble scene from the Battle of New York. Next up, we're going to be getting one more set from Thor Ragnarok for $25. This Surtur Battle set will finally give us the face-off between Thor and Surtur, who I'm guessing will be a poseable brick-built character like we've seen from superheroes before. Next up, we're also going to be getting a new Helicarrier for $60 with 509 pieces. And this set will actually be a midi scale helicarrier, similar to what we saw from Star Wars with the Super Star Destroyer. And it should be interesting to see how they pack in all the details. We'll also be getting another 4 plus Iron Man set, which will be $11, and an advent calendar, which will be $45. Next, from Lego Batman, we should be getting five new sets based on Batman the Animated Series. The largest one is coming in April, which is Batman the Animated Series Gotham City for $300 with 4,208 pieces, which should be a Lego art style depiction of Gotham City and iconic locations. And it's also said to include Batman, Joker, Harley Quinn, and Catwoman. And with that in mind, I'd expect some of those minifigures to bleed into the rest of the four sets, which will be coming in June. And if they look anything like these custom designs from Four Stud, we'll be in for a treat. Next step, it turns out we're going to be getting a set from Disney's Inside Out 2. The set is set to retail for $35 and include 394 pieces. The set name we currently have is the Cubes of Emotions Vice Versa, which I'm guessing has something to do with the new plot and the emotions that are introduced. And I'd 
love figures of the five core characters. Next from Sonic the Hedgehog, we're getting Super Sonic vs. Egg Drillster for $100 with 590 pieces. This iconic vehicle has a drill at the front, and I'm hoping it's a similar size to the recent Bowser muscle car. Plus, this set gives us our first Super Sonic like the one I mocked up here, and likely another Eggman. Next up, Tails is back with the Tails Adventure Boat, retailing for $60 with 393 pieces. The name reminds me of the game Tails Adventure, which means the boat might be this one called the Sea Fox. We're also getting Knuckles again in Knuckles and the Master Emerald Shrine for $50 with 325 pieces. Fans will be excited because this locale was featured in many different Sonic games and even in the box art to the recent Knuckles set. Next up, Harry Potter's also getting a D2C set with 2,405 pieces coming out in September. This set is long thought to be a larger scale version of the Burrow, and this version would be over 1,300 more pieces than the last one. Next, Lego's also giving us a new version of the Great Hall for $220 with 1,732 pieces. That is almost twice as many pieces as the previous largest Great Hall, which should make this one pretty impressive. We'll also be getting a Hogwarts expansion for the Potions class for $38 with 397 pieces. And I'm guessing these will connect to the Hogwarts Castle Boathouse as we saw some open clips. Next up, we're getting the Durmstrang ship and Bobatton's carriage for $140 with 1,229 pieces, which is interesting as miniature versions of these were featured in the Hogwarts Castle ground set. I'm especially excited for the Durmstrang ship as we haven't gotten one since 2005, and I'm hoping the carriage isn't too scaled down. Next up, we're returning to Diagon Alley for Ollivanders and Madame Malkins for $100 with 744 pieces. And while we have gotten Ollivanders before, this is in the series that started with the Weasley's Wizard Wheezes set that we got last year. But it is exciting that we're getting a new building this time in Madame Malkins. Next up, we're also getting Aragog Forbidden Forest for $15 with 195 pieces, which I'm guessing will be similar to this previous version. Similar to previous sets, we're also getting two buildable characters for $60 each. The first one is the Hippogriff Buckbeak, and it feels surprising that we haven't gotten this one sooner. But the surprise for me is a buildable Mandrake. And while they aren't the cutest of things, I'm guessing LEGO will do a nice job recreating it like they did Baby Groot. Next in Animal Crossing news, we got word this week that LEGO will be releasing exclusive Japanese versions of all the sets, with the only real difference being the box art, which features a Japanese version of the logo and set names. While this first batch of Animal Crossing sets will be coming out in March, we also got word of two more sets coming in August. And while we're missing the prices, we do know that it'll have 292 and 550 pieces respectively. And all this makes me super excited to see how the Animal Crossing world will expand. Next up in LEGO Ideas news, this week we got the reveal of the Red London telephone box. This set has 1,460 pieces, will retail for $115 starting on February 1st. The build depicts the bright red telephone box, which is actually celebrating its 100th anniversary. And there's also a nice street scene with a lamp, planter, and fence. And you gotta love a punny sign. At the top, there's nice printed pieces, and you can open up the door. And by pressing the button at the top, you can activate the interior light. The inside can be customized thanks to some extra pieces included. There's a vintage look with a rotary phone, and a series of stickers including references to the jazz club and typewriter. Or you can swap it out for the 1990s version, with references to Legoland, the London bus, and Lego Ideas itself. While this set certainly won't be for everyone, it does do a nice job paying homage to a British icon. Plus, I'm sure everyone will use this as a phone stand. Next up in LEGO Ideas news, there were two more projects that 10,000 supporters on the platform this week. First up, we've got Hello Kitty and Friends 50 Years. It's hard to believe Hello Kitty was first introduced in 1974, and this project celebrates the anniversary by depicting four mini buildings, including Hello Kitty's Cafe, the Mini Mart, Gift Shop, and Arcade. The builds are really cute, and as a fan of fun minifigures, I think this one could be cool. And next, we've got Dr. Seuss's The Grinch. This project is, of course, based off the classic children's book, and the build depicts the house of Cindy Lou Who, as well as the Grinch with his enormous sleigh. The designer packed in a lot of detail and references into the build, and I think this would make a fun set. But as we have seen a Dr. Seuss project rejected before, I'm curious how it'll do, but as always, we'll have to wait and see. So there you have it, another super fun week in LEGO news with so many sets to get excited about. It's hard to believe that there are still so many more sets coming from Marvel, Batman, Sonic, Animal Crossing, and Harry Potter, let alone new themes like Disney's Inside Out and, of course, LEGO Zelda, finally. And with so many of these sets high on my priority list, I'm definitely going to have to start saving up or perhaps ruthlessly prioritizing which ones I get. Be sure to leave this video a thumbs up down below if you're as excited as me, and don't forget to subscribe because I'll be back next week with even more LEGO news. And let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What did you think about all the stories, and which one are you most excited about? And now we've got this week's giveaway winner. Congratulations, and be sure to email me from the About page on my channel so we can coordinate about the prize. And if you want to enter this week's round, just leave me a comment about this week's news. You must be a subscriber to win, and definitely turn on notifications to find out when my next video is posted, because I'll be announcing the winners at the end of some of the videos. That's all the time we've got for today. Thanks, and have a good one!